Morning everybody. Um, yeah, today we are working on the 3505, so it is well overdue for a service. We're gonna give it one today. So there's quite a bit of work to be done on it. Um, main goal today is to do the engine service. So I wanna change engine oil, filter, plus the fuel filters. Grease a couple of spots. I might, oh, well, probably not greasing the whole thing, but grease a couple of spots that don't get greased as often as they're meant to be. Um, and if that all goes well, we'll flip it around and we'll do a little bit of work on the rear end. Um, yeah, but first off, we want to really just get this engine knocked over, get some fresh oil in there, and we'll uh, focus on the tasks after. So um, yeah, got me filters there, two fuel, one oil. We'll give the air cleaner a blowout as well. And we've got a bit of engine oil to chuck in there as well. Dad recently welded up a fire extinguisher to the front of it on a bracket there. Oh, I'm not a real fan of it. it takes away from the uh, beauty of the front. Uh, it used to just be tied up on the step, but anyway, we've got a fire extinguisher there now, so it's handy. So yeah, we'll just rip into it and um, get it knocked over. Yeah, so I've got a drain in there at the moment. Um, I think it takes a bit, almost 20 litres of oil. So let that drain out. I also had the tractor running for about five or so minutes just to warm it up a little bit. And that allows your oil to flow out a bit quicker and um, sort of get a bit more out too. So yeah, if you're doing a service on something that's cold, start it up for a little minute. And uh, yeah, that'll help you drain a little bit extra out and it'll make it a little bit quicker too. So yeah, we'll let that drain. I'll whack the bung back in. And then we'll um, chuck the new filter on as well. Nice and black. Which isn't uncommon for a diesel. So <laughs> that's what it normally looks like. I think I wanted to service it in September of last year. So it's well overdue for that. But it's also not on the schedule. It's just sort of being in service whenever dad felt like it. Usually dad services it. But I'm going to... Cause I'm taking over the sort of all the mechanical stuff on the farm, looking after all that sort of stuff. I'm trying to get everything back onto a schedule. So I have to look at the hours on the tractor today and work out when it needs to be serviced next. Uh, I think the intervals on this one are 250 hours. I think it's the same as the John Deere, 250 hours for engine services. And um, yeah, I think it's like a thousand hours for the rear end on these. But it hasn't been done in a long time, so we're going to do it anyway. Got a filter for the rear end, but we want because we want to do a little bit of work, which I'll explain later. We probably won't change that filter today. Oh yeah, so drained the sump oil, put the bung back in. So now we're going to drain the oil filter. There's a little um, bung at the bottom of it, so you can drain it if you want, which I'm going to do. So I pull that out and try not to let the wind blow it everywhere. See if we can get this filter undone. All right, now we'll chuck a new filter on, put a little bit of oil on the seal, doesn't need it because it's covered in oil. But um, yeah, that should be all right to go.
with Agco upside down and facing at us, which makes it look good. Filters always look better when the branding is out and you can read it. Even though it says Agco and that's a bit lame. Be better. It was better when they used to say Massey Ferguson. Now it's all Agco. Wow, how exciting. So yeah, I'll give that a quick brake clean off, get rid of all that oil, and then we'll move on to the fuel filters. Oh yeah, so before anybody says, I did remember to put that bung in the bottom of the oil filter housing. So that's back in, cleaned up. So move on to the fuel filters. So it's got two, and there are two part um, style fuel filter. So your main filter is this part here behind the faded fleet guard emblem. And then this bottom part is the bowl. So that catches all your water and dirt and crap, which there's probably gonna be a bit in there because that tank gets a little bit of water in there. I'll need to drain the water at the bottom of the tank too. So they're pretty simple to pull apart. It's just a bolt that goes straight through the center into the bottom of the bowl on both filters. And you just undo that bolt and then they'll separate and make a big mess. So we'll um, undo that and we'll have a look at the horrors that are in the both of those bowls. Now I'll have to move quick because it's going in the fuel tank, which will sometimes happen if your tank's up higher than the fuel fills. These aren't too bad. There's a bit of stuff in there, but not a lot as I thought there might be. The other one might be a bit worse because it will collect the fuel before the other one. Putting the new O-rings and seals on. There's one that goes around where the bolt is and there's one that goes up in the housing. So we'll try and fit them in as quickly as possible. Alright, that's in. And there's a second one that goes in the bottom of the bowl, well, top of the bowl, sorry. Then the filter just slides back over like that. And then we need to just line that bolt up with the rest of it. So that's one fuel filter done with the Massey Ferguson emblem pointing out, so it looks nice. These ones have Massey Ferguson instead of Agco for some reason, even though they come out of an Agco box. So we'll do this second one now, and then we'll be done.
All right, I've got the two filters on there. Now I know they're not the same brand. It doesn't really matter because I had a, I've got this Fleet Guard one I want to get rid of. And in the fridge, our parts fridge, I have two Agco ones, which are the same as that Massey Ferguson one. That's what, for some reason, Agco put Massey Ferguson on these ones, but not on the oil filter. I don't know why. So, so the Fleet Guard one will do. It's uh, pretty much the same filter. It's a little bit different in design, but it will do the same job. And we generally, we used to run Fleet Guard. I'm pretty sure I remember Dad putting Fleet Guards on it, and that's why we have this spare one. So it's getting used today. And, um, yeah. So now I've got to bleed these up. So this one should have a bit of fuel in it because it would have been filling up when I put it together. And same with this one. So it won't take much. But what I'll need to do is go in the other side. There's a where the lift pump is. I'll show you. Is. So here, this little pump here is to prime your fuel filters or fuel system, really. Um, yeah, you just push up and down on this lever and that primes the filters. So up in here, just there is the bleed screw. I'm gonna have to undo that. And then yeah, I'll keep bleeding until all the air is out of the fuel system. Alright, so because that fuel is flowing out, that means that the air is all out of the filter system. So we can close that back up now. Alright, so that's the fuel filter finished. So we'll fill the engine up with oil, start it up, make sure everything's all good, and um, recheck the oil level once we've done that. Righty, yeah, just fill the engine up with oil. So now we're right to start it. So. Hopefully she fires right up and um, yeah, we'll recheck the oil after because obviously it'll run a bit through that filter and fill it up. Come back, recheck it, top it up and then we'll move on to the next thing. Still must be a little bit of air in the fuel system, so we'll bleed it up a bit more. Alright, we'll give that another shot. Right, well it's been a real prick. Just will not bleed up. It's starting to run the batteries out now because I'm cranking it. So I'm gonna have to charge charger on the freaking batteries. We'll do something else while they charge. I might get that to come and give me a hand and then you can pump the bleeder while I crank it. That sometimes will work, so we'll move on to something else. Righty, right, so while the battery's on the charger, I've just ripped out the air cleaner, which is just behind the front grill here. Uh, I'm gonna give that a blow out. That probably, I don't think we've blown it out for quite a while. Probably does need a new one or new two. It has an inner and an outer one, um, but I didn't buy any. So <clears throat> we'll give it a blow out and it should be okay. And then we'll pull the air cleaner bowl off the top as well. We'll give that a clean out too, because there's no doubt that'll have a bit of dirt and stuff in there. Um, you're meant to do it regularly. Um, <clears throat> we don't really do it that often. We do it when, <laughs> before we start doing any major work really with the tractor. So yeah, we'll give this a clean out. It's probably gonna be chockers and we'll see how we go.
pretty dirty, quite a bit of stuff in there. So we'll give that a clean out and a wipe and put it back together nice and clean. That's looking a bit better. Chuck it back together. Alrighty, yeah, we managed to get the um, tractor started. So we ended up blading it through the fuel filters, obviously. Then there's a bleed screw here. And there, we just made sure there was no air coming out of both. Still was having trouble, so then we just gave it a big sniff of aero. And um, yeah, she fired up with a few cranks. So now she's running all right, and we checked the oil, and it's all good. So that part is done. Okay, so I just drew the tractor out. Um, what I'm going to do is give the radiator and the two coolers. So there's an AC cooler, which all the condenser. Um, which doesn't actually, it's not hooked into anything, but it's in front of the radiator as well as the hydraulic cooler. So give them all a good blowout, get all the dust out of them. Um, that's a thing you should do periodically in maintenance. Most people will know that. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. Give it a quick blowout. And then I want to have a little fiddle around with the muffler on it. There's meant to be these screws you undo and you can clean the muffler out by revving the engine. We'll have a look at that. I don't know if it'll happen. They're pretty rusted, so it might not be out under them. But we'll do this radiator and stuff first. All right, so got the tractor back in the shed. I turned it around the other way. I didn't end up having a look at that muffler thing I wanted to do, the bungs were just way too rusted, it was just gonna be a headache. Um, yeah, so what I wanna do is, down the bottom there, where the um, hydraulic ram and the three-point linkage arm joins to, I do believe that the seals are leaking on both sides, because it goes through into the back end of the tractor. And there's a lot of oil leaks on this back end that I wanna try and fix. As one, we lose oil and it costs money topping it up, which is really annoying. Two, it makes a mess everywhere, so the floor gets covered in oil. That's also annoying. So that's what I want to fix them for. It just yeah, gives me the wheelies. So unfortunately, our workshop manual doesn't show. It's not. It doesn't show one uh, this back end. It shows the back end of these tractors, but with uh, electronic draft sensing. Um, set up and this one doesn't have electronic draft it's all just manual set so it doesn't show the exact exploded views of what I actually want to see so it's sort of annoying so I'm sort of gone in blind here so we're gonna just pull it apart and just look I've got a seal and if it's the right seal I'll order another one but we're gonna just take our time and just sort of try and nut it out um, yeah if anybody does have a Workshop manual and knows we can get one a genuine Massey Ferguson one not a reproduction because one week goes a reproduction book If anybody has like a yeah an actual one to suit a 3505 Let me know because I would really like to get my hands on one, but um, yeah, anyway, we'll try and pull this apart and see What we can say So, not much luck really with this 
pin and seal. Um, pull to the part as you sort of saw. And after much sitting around thinking and looking at it, turns out that, well, what I can come up with. The manual I've got is for the American version of these tractors of the 35,000 series. Um, or 3500 series, sorry. Um, and back, this is a French built one, so European. Um, and we really need the manual for that because the manual only talks about having electronic draft, as I've already said. And the assembly for this rear end is completely different. So, on the electronic draft one, this whole pivot, this pin down here will pivot and there's a sensor that reads of it. On this one, it's a solid pin that just supports the linkage arm and the ram. Now, this bolt here stops it from going in. There's nothing on the outside that stops it from coming out. So that leads me to believe that there's something on the inside that stops it from coming out. Either a circlip or something, most likely a circlip. Which means the back end, so that houses the PDO shaft and everything, We'll have to come off to get to that. That's a huge, it's a big enough job for us. And it won't be happening anytime soon, I don't think. And from what the manual also says is that there's a PDO clutch on that American style tractor that is on the back of this third arm support housing. Now, whether or not this tractor has it, I don't know, neither does dad, we're not sure. Um, it, there's nothing stated in the manual about it having a clutch but you would have to pull the clutch off first to then be able to pull the PDO and the drive gears out so it is a big job and uh, for the sake of replacing two seals rather annoying really because yeah those seals are both dribbling oil out constantly so yeah it's pretty disappointing that it's not as simple as just pulling the link the lift linkage arm off and the lift uh, ram off. Um, yeah, there's a bit more to it. So disappointed in that. Anyway, so the service is done. I was yeah. Well, I would have been draining all that hydraulic oil. I would have changed the filter and all that. But now it's not a real point. So at least the engine's done. That's up to date. Um, and yeah, so we'll wrap up on this job anyway, <clears throat> and uh, we'll carry on through to tomorrow, because uh, as you would know in the last video, when me and Dad were do looking at sheep, um, no that's not the last video, but yeah, before that one, we were looking at the lambs, and we decided we were ready to shear them, we've organised Shane to come and shear the lambs this week, so... As you can see, when I've been dicking around this tractor, that's brought the ewes and lambs in. So yeah, we'll be drafting all the lambs off tomorrow to get them ready for shearing. So yeah, we'll most likely see you in the morning unless um, I do something before then. So, see you then. Morning everybody, so as I was saying yesterday, we are drafting the lambs off today to be shorn. So we've got the mob in here. Oh, dad brought them in yesterday, I think I said. And um, yeah, so we're gonna draft off the lambs and run them into the shed. So we're gonna give them a drench in there and their second vaccination. And then the ewes will just hang about out here, I guess. We'll chuck them back out in that one of the paddocks. Um, yeah, so we'll draft all them off. I think Dad said there's a couple that just need a quick crutch. And, um, yeah, so we'll wait for Dad to come back down and then we'll draft them off and, yeah, get them in the shed. And hopefully get it done pretty quickly because I think it's meant to be a relatively warm day today.
know, as you just saw, we uh, drafted the lambs, brought them in the shed, drenched, and gave them their second vaccination. And we um, crushed up about three, three, I think, that had a bit of body strike on their shoulders that had sort of happened in the last couple of weeks since we looked at them last. Um, so now they should be all good to, well, they're right to shear now, so they're gonna get shorn tomorrow. <clears throat> so we just let the ewes out into the back, well, not the back paddock, but the paddock behind the yards here. Now we'll let the lambs out of the sheep yards here and they can go behind the shed where the water trough is and they can have a drink and they'll hang around there for the rest of the day and then we'll run them into the shed later tonight and they can dry off over the night. So <clears throat> we'll let them out and then um, they might be our son for today. Rightio, so I just let those lambs out as you saw. They'll hang around the back and then we'll run them in the shed as I said before. Uh, yeah, so that pretty much will wrap this video up. Um, anybody with the keen eye would have noticed the few ewes that were in with those lambs. Sort of let them in, makes it a bit easier for them to run up in the shed because the ewes know what, know what goes, knows what to go on. That still makes no sense, but anyway, they know what's going on and they'll run up the ramp and they'll come in and that sort of encourages the lambs to come in with them. They'll follow along. Uh, makes life a little bit easier for us trying to get them up in here because the lambs, it'll be their first time coming into the shed. So the sheep, they, they don't really like it, but if they've been in a couple of times, they sort of understand what they're doing. Um, so that's why we sort of let a couple, few ewes go in with them. And also it makes it a little bit easier when we're drafting. If lamb and a ewe are together, we can just let them both in, so yeah. <clears throat> All right, so we'll wrap the video up and we'll see you bright and early tomorrow, but in a different video, for shearing. So thanks everybody for watching and we'll catch us in the next one. Hello.